Welcome. On this video, we will be defining properties of parallel lines. Let's start by defining corresponding angles. Every single angle that we'll be discussing today occur because of the same situation. We have two parallel lines, which in this case, those are lines M and N, because notice that they have the symbol for parallel lines. They have those red arrows. So that's implying that we have two parallel lines. And those parallel lines are intersecting with a transversal. And we said before that whenever we have this situation, we create new angles. Those angles are created within the intersection. So let's call this angle one. Let's call this angle two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So let me just erase this. So in the past, we have said that those angles can be seen as vertical and also supplementary, but we can even define them a little bit more into detail. So let's start by defining corresponding angles. Corresponding angles are those angles that are in the same position, but in different intersection. Same position but different intersection. What do I even mean by that? Well, let's say, let me concentrate on this intersection right here and this intersection right here. If we put a little square around this, and I put a little square around this, now it will be easy for us to see the location of those angles. Because notice that angle two, it's on the upper right hand side in the upper intersection and angle six, it's in the upper right hand side now in the other intersection. Then we can claim that angle two and angle six are corresponding angles. And if we continue with that idea, then notice that angle three, it's on the upper right hand side and angle seven it's on the upper right hand side of the other intersection then we can claim that angle three and angle seven are also corresponding angles and the same can be said about angle eight and angle four note that they both are on the lower left hand side Angle eight and angle four are also corresponding angles. And finally, we can say that angle one and angle five are also corresponding angles. They are on the same location or the same position, but they're just on a different intersection. So why is it so important for us to identify these angles? Because corresponding angles, angles are congruent. They have the same measurement. So if that is the case, then we can have the following statements. Since angle two and angle six were corresponding, then therefore angle two is congruent to angle six. If angle three and angle seven were corresponding, then angle three is congruent to angle seven. And the same can be said about eight and four. And the same can be said about one and five. So this is the first type of angles that we occur, that occur whenever we have two parallel lines intersecting with the transversal. We have corresponding angles. They are congruent and you can identify them by looking at the same position but in a different intersection. What's another type of angle that occur whenever we have that situation? We have alternate exterior angles. Now we need to differentiate what are the interior and exterior angles. Those angles which are within the two parallel lines which in this case, that would be five, six, four, and three. Those angles is what we refer to as the 
interior angles. And those angles that are outside of this interval are exterior, which in this case, that would be angle 1, 2, 8, and 7. So 1, 2, 8, and 7 is what we define as exterior angles. So what are the alternate exterior angles? Well, alternate exterior angles are those exterior angles that are on the opposite side of each other. So alternate exterior angles are ex exterior angles on opposite sides. And if we define them that way, then notice that angle two, well, let me actually use red. Notice that angle two is on the exterior on the right hand side, and angle eight, it's on the exterior, but on the left hand side. Then if that is the case, then we can say that angle two and angle eight are alternate exterior angles. Exterior angles. And if that is the case, then notice that angle one and angle seven, angle one, it's on the left hand side of the exterior and angle seven, it's on the right hand side of the exterior. Well, if that is the case, then we can say that angle one and angle seven are also alternate exterior angles. Why is it that it's important for us to identify alternate exterior angles? Because alternate exterior angles are congruent, are congruent. So if that is the case, then we can say, because angle two and angle eight were alternate exterior angles, then the measurement of two is equivalent to the measurement of angle eight. Because angle one and angle seven were alternate exterior angles, then angle one is congruent to angle seven. It is very important for us to identify what type of angles they are, and if they fit that description, then we can claim a property where this property is of congruency. So these are alternate exterior angles. Now let's define alternate interior angles. So just like we mentioned before, those angles which are within the parallel lines are the interior angles, which in this case, that will be angle four and three, five and six. And just like the name says, alternate interior angles, then the way that we're going to define them, are interior angles, interior angles, which are opposite, or which are in opposite position, or I should say location. So it is essentially the same as alternate exterior angles. It's just that we're just looking at the ones who are inside, the ones which are interior. So if that is the case, then notice that angle three, it's an interior angle, which is on the right hand side and angle five, it's an interior angle, which is on the left hand side. It's on the opposite location. And if that is the case, then we can say that angle three and angle five are alternate exterior angle. I'm sorry, internate interior angle. And if we take a look at another ones here, we can also claim that angle four, it's on the left hand side and angle six, it's on the right hand side. Then we can claim that angle four and angle six are also alternate interior angles. So now that we know how to identify them, then we can talk about the property. And the property is that alternate interior angles. So alternate interior angles are congruent as well. So if that is the case, 
because angle 3 and angle 5 were alternate interior angles, then we can say that angle 3 is congruent to angle 5. Angle 4 and angle 6 were alternate interior angles, then we can claim that angle 4 and angle 6 are also congruent to each other. So notice how important it is to identify them. Now that you have identified them, then we can apply this characteristic, which is of being of congruent. Now, the last type of angle that we need to discuss is consecutive interior angles. So we're going to start the same way, identify where are the interior angles, which in this case are the ones within the parallel lines. So they are angle four, three, five, and six. So those are the interior angles. Now, what do we mean by consecutive? Well, consecutive interior angles are angles which are interior and on the same side. Okay, what do I mean by that? Well, four, three, five, and six, they're interior. But notice that angle three, it's on the right hand side. And also angle six, it's on the right hand side as well. So those two angles are interior and they are both on the same side, the right hand side of the transversal. Therefore, we can classify them as consecutive interior angles. So therefore, angle three and angle six are consecutive interior angles. And if we follow that same idea, then we can also claim that angle four and angle five are also consecutive interior. They are interior and they are both on the left hand side of the transversal. Then we can claim that also angle four and angle five are consecutive interior angles. Why is it that it's important for us to identify them? Well, when it comes to all consecutive interior angles, uh, consecutive interior angles, they are not congruent, but are supplementary. What do we mean by that? Well, if they are said to be supplementary, then therefore, if I add angle three and I add angle six, that will give me a value of 180 degrees. And the same goes with angle four. If I, if I were to add it up to angle five, it will also give me 180 degrees. So those are the four type of angles that we need to understand when it comes to the same situation. Two parallel lines are met with the transversal. We can create course or we can identify corresponding angles, which are congruent. Alternate exterior angles, which are congruent alternate interior angles, which are congruent, and consecutive interior angles, which are supplementary. So let's take a look at one quick example in here. On the right-hand side, we have two parallel lines, and I know that they're parallel because notice that we have this notation of two arrows, okay? And also notice that we have this transversal line which I guess we can define them as this line right here. Whenever we have the situation of two parallel lines met with the transversal, then we got to think about all the four different angles that we have defined previously. So let's actually go one step further and let's identify what do we know. I know that the measurement of this angle is 136 degree. And I know that this measurement is 7x plus 9. All right. So how can we start with this example? Well, the idea here is to identify the value of X. Which type of angle should we use? There's different ways to go about it. One thing that I do notice is the following. I know that angle 136 and angle one, they are supplementary. They create the same line. 
So perhaps what we can say is that 136 plus angle 1 that is equivalent to 108 degrees. So if we do a simple math here, we can subtract 136 to both sides. And now we have an actual measurement for that angle. Angle 1 has a measurement of 44 degrees. Now, why is that helpful? Well, let's see. If angle 1, let's actually put the measurement of this angle. If angle 1 is 44 degrees, notice that angle 1 and this expression, 7x plus 9, they can be seen as alternate exterior angles. Exterior angles. Well, if they are both alternate exterior angles, then that means that they are congruent. If they are congruent, then they are equal to each other. So now we can set this expression equal to each other. 44, well actually, let me write it out the other way. 7x plus 9 is equal to 44. But again, notice how we got this equation. We got this equation by identifying what type of angles they were. And at this point, we can just perform a very simple math in order for us to identify what that is. So 44 minus 9, that is 35. So now we got 7x equals 35. And then if we divide by 7, we got 7. I'm sorry, 35 divided by 7, we got 5. So we have accomplished the first objective. I know that x has a value of 1, I'm sorry, of 5. And I guess along the way, we also identify what was the value for angle 1. We also saw that angle 1 was a value of 44 degrees. So in summary, the main idea here is to identify what type of angles we have. And now that you identify them, then we can attach the properties that go with it, either congruency or supplementary, depending on what type of angles they are. Hello. If you would like to continue to learn about mathematics, you can check out the videos on the left. Thank you.